Life without pressure gauges would be pretty rough. Figuring out everyday things like oil pressure, air pressure, and blood pressure would be almost impossible. Without pressure gauges, we'd even have trouble taking a proper shower because getting the correct water pressure in our homes would be a hit and miss affair. For a pressure gauge to be trustworthy, whether it's measuring gases or liquids, it must be exceptionally well made and accurate. To start, a worker loads an aluminum faceplate into a printing press. It applies a colored scale used for measuring pressure in pounds per square inch. The type of scale it prints depends on the measuring unit being used. Then a worker puts a copper tube into a bending machine that bends, cuts, and flattens sections of the tube. The amount of flattening and bending determines the pressure range the gauge can measure. Each piece becomes a pressure sensing tube known as a Bordon tube. Then a worker cuts lengths of brass that he machines into connectors. They will link the Bordon tube to an inlet pipe. He melts zinc solder in the connector's receptacle, and he mounts the Bordon tube in the correct position. He fills the gap between the connector and the Bordon tube with solder. Then he flushes the heated piece with water to cool it down, sealing the tube in place. He puts the cooled piece on a mounting fixture and solders the other end of the Bordon tube to the gauge's internal mechanism. He seals the gap and pulls it down. Then he puts the finished pieces, or pressure system assemblies as they are now called, into a cleaning machine. Its hot soapy water washes away any dirt and loose solder particles. The pressure system assemblies then go on to a leak testing machine that pushes air into the tubes. A stable pressure reading indicates there is no leakage. Another worker takes a gear mechanism which controls the mechanical movement inside the gauge and places it on the connector. A machine screws the gear mechanism in place. He then takes the gear's connecting link and rivets it to the pressure system assembly. He fits the pressure system assembly inside a protective stainless steel housing. A machine screws it all together. Next, a worker calibrates the assembly. She loosens up the connecting link slightly to prevent friction, puts on the indicator needle, and runs a test. After a bit more adjusting, she puts the faceplate and the indicator needle back on. She ensures the gauge reads accurately at three key positions and then screws the faceplate onto the gauge. A final test confirms it is calibrated properly. Then she puts a glass cover over the faceplate and adds a steel ring to hold it in place. A crimping machine evenly folds the ring's edge until it makes a perfect seal. Now she fills the gauge with glycerin. Glycerin lubricates the internal mechanical parts and increases the lifetime of the gauge. Glycerin also absorbs vibration well, which helps the indicator needle remain stable during operation. A worker completes the pressure gauge by sealing off the fill hole with a rubber plug. But of course, not all gauges are built the same way. As accurate and dependable as a Swiss watch, a trustworthy pressure gauge also has a pretty face. <laughs>